Hey, what's going on everyone? Hope you're doing well. In this video, guys, I'm going to be showing you how to make great looking thumbnails in Photoshop. Also in the description, I'm going to be linking a thumbnail pack that I really recommend you to use. And also make sure to stick with the video to know how to use it. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to show you several tips and tricks. But guys, hope you enjoy. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And let's get started. Okay guys, so the first thing that you want to do is go in the description of this video and download everything that is required for making your thumbnails. And this will include some fonts, gradients, and a thumbnail pack. Make sure you have Photoshop installed because this pack only works for this software. Once you're done, you're going to open this pack and you're going to get some errors. Don't worry because it only tells you that you don't have the fonts installed. You're going to go in the fonts folder and you're going to install every single one of them. If you still get some errors, it doesn't really matter. You're just going to ignore them. And this is how the pack will look. As you can see, there are a lot of folders which include flares, particles, borders, overlays and much more but I'm just going to cover the essentials. So the first thing that we're going to do is make a brand new thumbnail. So to do so we're going to click on file, new and select custom. Now the settings I recommend you to use are 1280 by 720 and the resolution 300. You can put the background contents to either white which is by default or transparent. Then you're going to click on create and what you want to do right now is get yourself a background because you're not going to use a white background. So now you have to think about the type of video you're going to make. You can either make a gaming video or a tutorial video it doesn't really matter. Let's say that we want to make a gaming video. So I'm going to think about a game and yeah let's take Valorant for example. We're going to go ahead and search for Valorant gameplay, go into images and let's take for example this image. It looks great and basically this is a screenshot that was taken in game. So let's for example say that you want to make a Call of Duty thumbnail. You're going to go in game and you're going to make a screenshot. Then you're going to take the image and you're going to paste this in here. If you need to resize the image, you're going to click on Ctrl and T and then resize it and we're done. We can now delete this layer and double click on this and rename it as background. I don't recommend you renaming your layers. You just have to double click on the text and write whatever you want. So this is our image. We're not going to use it like that. What you want to do is hide the radar and the HUD. So what we're going to do is resize again and try to just resize so that we hide everything. This looks so much better already. And the next step is try to find the color that you see the most in your background. So in my case, I see more around orange and yellow as well. So what I'm going to do is go back to the thumbnail pack. So I'm going to go and open this borders folder right here and find an orange border. Now, if in your case, your background is around green, you're going to take a green border. It's very easy. So in my case, I'm just going to select this one, select the layer like this, toggle the visibility by click here, and then you can just do a control C, go back in here, control V. Then to resize it, control T. To unzoom and rezoom, I forgot to say that, you're just going to hold Alt and mouse wheel up and down and you can resize this and we're just going border and there we go it already looks so much better but we need to add a bit of things so let's rename this border and right click blending options you have to right click on the layer blending options and i'm going to go to this drop shadow section as you can see i already have some settings let's put this Right around here the size is okay the opacity is okay as well and we can hit okay now i'm going to add a bit of light it's not a big difference it does make your thumbnail look a bit better so you have to open this up brush lights toggle the visibility and ctrl c ctrl v there we go now we have to add a bit of text so let me show you some text samples where is the folder it's right here so we have this font, Burbank Big, Unisans. So Burbank Big and Unisans are the fonts that I use the most. The next font is American Captain, Bebas, AR Destine and Blobra. You can use whatever you want, but I recommend you to only use... So for example, let's say that you're going to put two text layers. In my case, I'm going to use like thumbnail, tutorial. The thing is, you want to use the same font. I'm not going to use Burbank Big and Unis. It will look weird. I mean, you can do that, but it will just look a bit weird. So I'm just going to go ahead and go back here, use this tool and 
right our text for some reason this is really big thumb name if you want to change the font Control a to select all the text then go in here and write in your font i'm going to use this one once you're done you can just click in here Control t and resize the image Control t and also when you move your layers around as you can see there is like a purple line this shows you if the layer is centered this is a very cool feature let's resize it a bit more and there we go now i'm going to change the color from this to white so i'm going to go and right click blending options and add color overlay to white then i'm going to add a drop shadow and in here you can use different styles so style i recommend you to use is first you have to put the opacity at 100 the spreads a bit higher like this and the size doesn't really matter around 30 pixels so this is the first way of doing it. or you can also change the distance like this and as you can see it makes like a 3d effect and it looks very clean once you're done adjusting your setting you're going to click ok and you're going to add a second layer or if you don't want to add a second layer you can just leave it like this but in my case i want to use a second layer and most of the times what i do is the first layer of text is white and the second one is matching the theme color so in my case it's around orange and yellow so i'm just going to clone this just right click duplicate layer and ok to move this i'm going to hit ctrl t and move it down also one thing that i forgot to say is that the order in here matters so if i put the background on top of the border and the lights as you can see these two are not visible so it has to be below everything so the order really matters and let's change the text to tutorial there we go let's resize it a bit and we're good now i want to add a gradient on my text so to do so i'm going to right click blending options and go and untick this color overlay and go into gradient overlay as you can see uh, i already have a gradient selected and in what you downloaded there is a gradients folder that contains a lot of gradients but the one i do recommend you to use is this one ultimate gradients pack now you have to be careful because when you're going to import those gradients there is a limit you cannot have 300,000 gradients there is a limit and to import your gradients what you're going to do is just click in here and click on this and you're going to hit import gradient in my case it's grayed out because i did hit the limit and when you're going to import this it's going to say that some of the gradients could not be imported because the maximum amount was reached but it doesn't really matter so let me show you what you have to do so if for example i don't know you want to put your text around green let's find something around for example this one looks really dope but uh, as you can see it's reflected because i did choose the reflected style you can either choose the reflected style or the linear style i do recommend you only using uh these two because this one looks a bit weird this one as well and this one as well so either linear or reflect linear actually looks pretty dope on this gradient but i'm just going to use the one that i had before and i don't actually find it so where is it it's this linear looks really really nice and for some of you i think this is pretty much it right but i think it's a bit empty and you can add a bit of things so if you go back in here you can search for flares for example and let me actually back borders and hide this so you can go into flares and for example we have this flare right here it looks really nice i'm going to copy that paste it in here so just ctrl c ctrl v ctrl t to resize it and if we go into a corner we can change the rotation so let's rotate this or we can also just click right click on this and rotate 90 degrees clockwise resize this a bit and uh it doesn't look that great because i want this to be below this looks so much better if we go back to the thumbnail pack you have even more things such as particles like this we have some arrows so let's for example take this arrow one thing that i recommend you to do is everything that you're going to paste i don't know like a subscribe button or stuff like this when you're going to paste the layer add some drop shadow as you can see it doesn't look that great but once i go in the blending options and select drop shadow and change the opacity it already looks better no actually it doesn't look that great like this it's it's looking nice let's put this for example like that you see i'm, I'm just a bit creative right i just put an arrow and it's it's very creative i mean yeah you also have some emojis use a cry emoji like i lost my my virginity cry emoji i don't know you can use whatever you want you also have the live button which is really really nice for your um 
YouTube live thumbnails. And yeah, I think that's I covered pretty much everything. As you can see, this is very clean. This is simple, but yet very effective. But guys, hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next one. Goodbye.